Hey everybody, Tag Life Done Free. Today, I would like to discuss mindset and practical ways of detaching from the system. So if you're interested, come on, check it out. Before we begin today, I would like to give a special shout out to Tony from Freesteading for reminding me that the mindset often dictates the outcome. I'd also like to give a special thanks to Robert Sly and Captain Lou for their contributions. Also, never go outside the law, working within it to create your own freedom. Getting in trouble will only remove what freedom you have, and this will take you out of the game, rendering you useless to the cause. With all the craziness going on in the world and the clear degradation of the American society, people only have a few options for navigating these times. From the mental perspective, how do we deal with all the things going on today? In this series, we will dive deep into the practical, modern ways of going galt. But first, let's take a look at the different mental states people use for navigating these troubles times. I think we can categorize them or categorize at least the like-minded people in four mindsets. First, we have the complainer. This person watches what's happening going on around the world and gets upset at the actions of the people in charge. They're frustrated, they mumble, they share their frustrations with their neighbors and their colleagues. This person spends their time being angry at what's happening. They're pinned to Fox News looking for more things to be angry about. This mindset only hurts this person. No change is coming. They are tired of being angry all the time, and this person is rendered weak by the powers that be. This is such an ineffective mindset and a great example of kicking your own butt. Next is the ostrich. This person figures out that they didn't create the system, they're not part of the system, so why worry about it? This person doesn't pay attention and decides not to invest their energy into the system. Content with getting the most out of life, this person remains happy and not bogged down by the tyranny surrounding them. This works great until it directly affects them. And by this time, it's too late, as there's nobody left to stand with them. Next is the Minuteman. This person is so upset at everything that is going on that they are committed to fighting back by whatever means are available to them. The problem with this mindset is that the Minuteman will always lose and the state just gains more power. This actually makes the problem worse. And finally, we have going galt. Instead of trying to take over an existing system like the Minuteman does, build new systems that will take over as the old systems fail. To not only not pay attention to the system, don't even use it. This is the most difficult option, but the only one that offers real change. Certainly enjoy life, but look for the opportunities to detach from the system. Pay attention to what's going on around you so that you are not a casualty of it. But put your energy capital into creating a new system that allows you to live by your own terms. I'd like to begin by a quote from Zero Hedge. It says, they take us as fools, and most of our fellow citizens are. For those tired of being deceived, coerced, manipulated, gamed, it's the 11th hour. The system is far too large for any individual to throw a branch and the spokes on their own. We must opt out, never vote again, acquire land, secure arms to defend you and yours from this accelerating tyranny. Start 3D printing. Use cryptocurrencies and cash to erase economic dependence. Set up decentralized, autonomous communities of like-minded individuals. They will come for us eventually. In this mindset world, it's worth the sacrifice. We have to lay the groundwork now if we want to pass on liberty and self-determination to future generations. So, how do we go galt? Let's start with some practical ways of exiting the system. Once I got you all nice and warmed up, we can discuss the bigger ways. A couple disclaimers though. First, I'm not an attorney, financial advisor, or accountant. You should seek the advice of a professional. This is just for entertainment. Any of you that have followed me on my channel have heard me to refer to backside money. Here are practical ways of making money on the backside and helping to bring real change by going galt. Did you know that the average American pays over 60% of their income in taxes? 
whether it's income taxes, property taxes, sales taxes, gasoline taxes, food tax, utility tax, etc. So here are some practical ways that we can starve the beast and legally reduce the amount of money to pay in and have more usable capital. The first thing is, let's take the maximum allowable exemption on your W-4 form and delay the tax you're paying on the income. Keep the money set aside so that when the tax time comes, you'll have the funds available. You are denying the interest earned, starving the beast. Now guys, this takes discipline, right? You gotta be able to put the money aside, not spend the money, but at the end of the day, you're making interest on your money instead of feeding the beast. Next, let's grow as much food as humanly possible. After that, let's shop at the local farmer's market and produce stands for as much of the food as you can. See, this keeps the money local and diverts the fun, funds away from big ag, which then uses the money to lobby Congress for more tax dollars. So not only are you keeping the money local, you're taking the money out of the machine that lobbies for more taxes. If feasible, change your heating and cooling system to more efficient systems that reduce the amount of utilities you need to purchase. If this is not feasible, then we can focus our energy or we can focus on energy savings like insulation, upgraded windows, shades, uh, even shade trees. Reducing your energy consumption will reduce the amount of utility taxes you pay, again gaining backside money and also starving the beast. Use cash whenever possible. Using credit card puts money into the hands of big banks, which then again, they're going to use this money to lobby Congress for more tax dollars. Buy as much as you can locally. Um, so like an example of that, you can go buy a pizza from Pizza Hut or you can buy it from a local pizzeria, right? This keeps the money local. It diverts it from large corporations who use your money again to lobby for more tax dollars. Plus, many shop owners will appreciate the cash because they're not paying the fees on those credit cards, again, starving the beast. Purchase as much as you can from the secondary market, Craigslist, yard sales, flea markets, um, marketplace, things like that. You can find many new and gently used items through these outlets, and, and again, there's no sales tax due on these items, it's making more backside money, putting more money into your pocket, and also starving the beast. If you're able, move to a state that doesn't even have income taxes. There's many of them, Alaska, Florida, Nevada, South Dakota, Texas, Washington. If this isn't possible, inside the state you're in, live in an area where the property taxes are lower. Vote with your feet and starve the beast. Now, for those of you who have watched my videos, there's a video way, way, way back about how we chose our land where we did a needs and threat assessment to hone into an area, right? Property tax would be one of these items that I would consider as I did my threat and needs analysis. If possible, start a home-based business and take the home office deduction. You know, most small businesses experience a loss the first few years, creating, again, another deduction. Try natural remedies for common ailments to avoid spending money on pharmaceutical products. Source these from locally owned sh shops whenever possible. This takes the money out of the pharmaceutical industry that again is going to use that money to lobby Congress for more of your money. It also puts money back into the small business and into your local community. Keep as little money in the bank as possible. Have as much cash on hand as possible as well as physical gold and silver. Again, when you put your money in the bank, they're paying you just a tiny bit of interest that isn't keeping up with inflation anyway, right? It's taking it out of the system. Change your bank, your mortgages, any loans you have either to a local credit union or a local bank. You know, something with not a whole bunch of branches. Again, because this diverts the profits away from the big banks. Those big banks are going to use that money to lobby for more of your taxpayer dollars, bailouts, all of those kind of things. Keep great records for charitable contributions you make throughout the year. You can deduct both cash and property as you donate to a qualified organization. If you can't sell it, just don't throw it out. Donate it and take the deduction, creating backside money back into your pocket. Find people in your area that have work at home sales businesses and purchase gifts, cosmetics, etc. through them, avoiding shopping at the major retailers. Some other little things you can do, for those of you who like to drink, brew your own beer, make your own wine. You know, it's a fun hobby, but you'll also avoid paying the liquor and the sales tax. 
If this is not for you, then at least purchase your beer and wine that is made locally or smaller independent companies to avoid putting the money in the hands of those major corporations that are going to use that money again to lobby and get more of your dollars. If you have a skill, network with others for trades of services. Trading services is another a great way not to pay taxes, creating backside money back to your pocket. Instead of buying a new vehicle, buy a pre-owned one. Many local owned dealers have like new cars available for sale with very low mileage. Not only will it save money and you'll pay less taxes, but you'll also prevent your money from going to the big automakers and unions who use your money to lobby, lobby Congress for more of your money. Avoid buying products produced by union shops, because again, that money goes to the union that then goes and lobbies for more of your money. Consider giving up paid TV. The elimination of uh, paid TV, particularly cable, will reduce a whole lot of taxes and users fees. And there are many ways you can still get plenty of viewing choices, over the air broadcast, internet streams, Netflix, etc. Consider switching to a prepaid cell plan using a secondary carrier. This diverts money from the major carriers and reduces some of the taxes you pay. And what you reduce is again backside money, putting more money back into your pocket. In the next few videos, we're going to be discussing taking the going galt theory to the next level. You don't have to disappear to go galt. You can do many small things that will not only improve your life, but will bring about change. I hope this is a series that will get traction and that we can all sit down together and decide ways that we can break those chains from the system. As I always tell you guys, you know, go out every single day and try to live a little bit freer today than you did yesterday. And going galt is part of this. Going galt will bring real change. Hold the line. Don't give an inch. Tag out.